Hello and welcome to this mini-series where we will be creating our very own production-ready game from scratch. Let's get started. Welcome to episode one of how to create a video game in Unity. Here's what we're going to be making in the first couple of episodes in this series. It doesn't look like much now, but as we progress, we'll add more and more features to make this a high fidelity playable game. What I'm trying to accomplish with this series is to teach you how to weave all of the pieces together. So here are all the things that we're going to be learning over the course of this series. And I hope that you like and subscribe to follow along. So let's get started by opening up Unity Hub and creating a new 3D project. I'm going to already assume that you have this downloaded, but if not, I will put a link in the description below. So I'm just going to be naming my project Unity Basics, and as you can see, you can choose from 2D, 3D, AR, and VR. Um, we're going to be selecting 3D, but if you accidentally select something else and need to change it at a later time, it's not a big deal, it's a really easy fix. It just changes a couple of settings in your Unity project that you can go back and change if you need to. All right, so this is what a blank Unity project looks like. Yours probably won't look the same because I have my configuration saved, so you probably won't have all the tabs, but Unity will give you a hierarchy tab, a console, a project view, a scene view, and a game view. I recommend having the game tab over here just so you can see how your game is rendering in real time. So we can see that Unity gives us a couple of things right off the bat. First of all, they provide us with a sample scene that contains a camera and a directional light. The camera is what actually allows us to view our game. So if we turn it off, as you can see, it doesn't render. So we definitely need our camera in the scene and Unity also provides us with a directional light. And this simulates the sun and allows us to view our game as we would view it in real life. Our light isn't doing much for us right now because we don't have any objects in our scene, so let's create our first game object. So the first thing we need in our game is our player. So we're going to right click, go down to 3D object, and select sphere. And this will add a sphere game object to our scene view and game view, and that is reflected in the hierarchy as well. And we can name him anything we want to, but I'm going to be renaming him player. So let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, we have a ball in the middle of the screen. Let's change that. So when we click play, we want the ball to fall. So in order to do that, the ball needs to have physics and more specifically gravity. So if we click on the sphere game object, we can see that it comes with a few components, but in order to add gravity, we need to add a component called a rigid body. Now that we've added our rigid body component, you can see that it comes with a few settings. We can change those if we want to, but the default will work just fine. And now when we click play, drum roll, our ball falls. However, we don't want our ball to fall to infinity, so let's right click, select 3D object, and then cube to serve as a platform. I'm going to rename our cube to ground and then position him underneath our player sphere object. Notice how as I start to reposition him in the scene view, how that changes in the game view on the right hand side. But our cube is hardly a platform at this point, so I'm going to scale him up by dragging my mouse along these different axes in the Inspector tab just to see what I get and where I should go from there. And now that our cube is looking a little bit more like a platform, if I want to, I can hold down the Alt key and actually pivot around to see the scene view from a more holistic standpoint. Now, if you ever get too zoomed out or lost in your scene view, you can go to your hierarchy, double click on that object, and it will take you right to that object in the scene. So when I scaled my platform, it scaled out from the center. However, I want my player to start at the beginning of the level. But as you can see, if I move him, he actually moves out of view of the game camera. So I have two options here. I can either adjust my camera and my player to the desired position, or I can keep them in the same place and move the ground where I want. I'm a fan of the latter, so let's take a look around our scene view and see how it's shaping up. I've also noticed that my scene view is opposite of my game view, so let's correct that. All right, now that our player and platform are shaping up, let's move our player a little bit up and hit the play button and see what happens. And perfect. At this stage, this is exactly what we want to happen. And while it doesn't have any logic or programming attached to it yet, let's continue on. And just for grins, because we did not add a rigid body component to our ground, let's add one and see what happens. And goodbye forever, player and platform. 
So this is an instance of a game object where we definitely do not want gravity attached. So if we go to that component, we right click and select remove component, all should be right with the world. Now that our foundation looks good, let's go ahead and add some enemies. So let's go to our hierarchy view, right click, 3D object and select cube. Now I'm going to replicate the same process as I did with the platform. So I'm going to add it in, scale it up, make sure that it's in the scene view and in the game view, and then replicate these throughout the entire level. Side note, if you want all of your enemy objects to look the same, this would be a great place for a prefab, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And now when we click play, this is what we see. Now we have our structure set up, but it's looking a little bland in here. So let's change that by creating some materials and placing them in our assets folder. You can see that Unity provides us three folders by default, assets, scenes, and packages, but let's go into assets, right click, create, and then let's create a new folder and name it materials. You'll notice that the folder icon looks slightly different because it's empty, but let's click into it and create our first material. So you'll click in, right click, create, and then material. Now that we have our first material created, we can name it whatever we want to. I'm going to be naming it enemy after its purpose. And you can see in the inspector view that Unity provides us with this default kind of bland white material. But all that is about to change because we want color baby. So let's change this into a nice light and airy green. So if we use the color picker here, we can select whatever color we want and then drag and drop these onto the game objects in our scene. And now let's head back to our materials folder and create one for our player. So right click, create, and then new material. Now for our player material, let's play around with some extra settings here, but let's start by changing his color to blue. And now let's drag and drop our new material onto our player game object. Now the nice thing about doing it this way is that I can actually adjust these settings and see them update in real time in our scene view. So taking this material a step further, let's adjust his metallic and smoothness levels and have him look like a marble. Maybe this game can be flappy marble? I don't know. Tell me what you think. And the last thing I want to cover in episode one is how to change out that default skybox that you see in the background. So let's head on over to the Unity Asset Store and see what we can find. So let's go ahead and search for skyboxes. And for this project, we're going to be using free assets. So let's make sure that that free assets filter is checked. Now I've already done the due diligence of checking out fantasy skybox free. However, as you can see, there are lots of different types of free assets available for you to use. Now for me, since I've already downloaded this, it just says open in Unity, but for you, it will say add to my assets. Now let's get this into Unity. So let's head on over to our Package Manager tab. And if you don't have this, you can just go to Window and then Package Manager, and that tab should pop right up. Now Unity provides us with a couple of different filters for Package Manager up at the top, and we're gonna wanna click on that and select My Assets. And as you'll see, this is actually a bug, so I'm going to restart Unity and be right back. So now that I've restarted Unity, there are all of my assets and they are in alphabetical order. So I'm just going to go down to Fantasy Skybox Free and then click on Import. Usually, if you've never used this asset before, it will show you Download and then Import. But since I've used this in another project, I just have the Import button. Now, as soon as that's done importing, we'll see a new folder appear in our Assets folder with the name of the package that we just imported. And if we navigate to that new folder from our Project tab, we can see everything that we just downloaded from that asset at a glance. And this is where it starts to get really fun here, and you'll see very shortly how something as simple as adding a skybox can completely change the feel of your game. Now, you might not know what we're looking at here, but that's okay because we're going to now navigate over to our lighting tab and that's going to tell us what will actually fit in our skybox. If you don't see the lighting tab, one of the easiest ways to search for things within Unity is using their universal search using that help button at the very top. So as I'm searching for lighting, not only does it show me the panel, but it shows me how to find it within the UI. And as you continue on your Unity journey, there will be many a hidden panel. But if we go to that window tab and then go to panels, you can see a few of them right there with number six being lighting. And as you can imagine, with lighting, there are lots of different types of settings, but in order to change our skybox, we need to navigate to the environment tab. Now, if we use that little circle icon at the very right of the skybox field, 
Unity will show us, like a puzzle piece, everything that will fit into that slot. And as you can see, everything from the fantasy skybox is populating. And while the brightness and the lighting might be a little bit off for some of these, we can play around and see which skybox best fits our game. You could definitely get lost playing around with all of these because as you can see, each skybox dramatically changes the feel of the game. I wanted to include this in episode one because not only is it relatively simple, but at some point in your Unity journey, you're going to want to know how to use packages and how to use the Unity asset store to your advantage. And with that being said, I think this skybox works really well for our game. It gives it kind of a toony feel, but it is still a little bit bright. So let's go back to our directional light that we were given at the very beginning of the project and just tone down its intensity a little bit. And now that we've covered the basics of the Unity editor, it is now time to start writing logic and attaching scripts to all of our game objects. And with that, this completes episode one. If you would like to tackle programming with me, please stay tuned for episode two, and I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It would really help me out, and I will see you in the next episode.